Good day everyone, this is Noel. Today I'm going to use Fusion 360 to build a sign for my neighbor. And I start with Fusion 360 and work through a lot of problems that it seems. Fusion 360 is something I struggle with, but I do end up getting something out of it. And this video is shot a little faster than real time based on the capture rate. So you can see what I'm doing uh, at a faster rate and I do a voiceover to describe what I'm doing. I wanted to use the stock on the table and rotate it 90 degrees. In the end I was not able to do that but you can see me try to work through building the three-dimensional object. So I've got a 12 by 24 piece of stock and I'm putting in an aerial font with a bold and italic accent on it and I want a two-inch border so there's a a square I just a rectangle I just put in and I'm going to extrude them now and this is the lovely part of Fusion 360's everything disappears when you try to extrude something you're going into a different modeling mode so now I'm extruding the text And I want this essentially be to top, be the top of the board, which is a birch plywood. Everything around the letters, I'm going to extrude down so that the bit will cut down and weigh and remove this material. So I think I have it drawn the way I want. It was really just three steps: text and two boxes or two rectangles. And it looks right, but I look at it in a few different ways. I, I render it to see if everything is as I had intended it. And I want to show that Fusion 360 has a rendering facility. Now here's where I learned that you shouldn't have Facebook open in the background. And other stuff I'm working on. <laughs> I could edit that out, but if you're making YouTube videos, you can appreciate that not every you don't set everything up as you intend. Many of the people I see using Fusion 360 on YouTube videos are quite proficient with it. And I don't think that gives a real-world picture of people using Fusion 360. I think a lot of users even with a few months experience still struggle with some of the aspects of Fusion 360. I do get something out of it. It just takes it's a it's quite the struggle sometimes. So here I'm checking the depth of the text and making sure I have something on the back to hold everything. It looks like I got a good quarter inch of material at the back of the plywood so the letters will stay in position and won't fall out. They're actually numbers but the characters. Changing units and and all. I like working in metric but the wood projects that I work on I work to on, on the imperial system. For when you're designing a sign, the main point is that people can find you. I watched several times where the UPS driver would drive right by this house and then finally drive down their driveway. And I look at this sign, the sign they have all the time, and I thought, well, I don't think I could read that from the road. So I asked them if I could make a sign. And they said yes. This is Fusion 360 
doing the tool paths. And this is where Fusion 360 is, is so beautiful in that when it's doing adaptive clearing, it is actually doing robotic artwork. This is me trying to turn it 90 degrees, and I don't think I was ever successful. I had to find another place on the stock to print this, but I struggled with it for quite some time, just trying to turn the thing 90 degrees so that I could print it on the table in a spot where I wanted. You can only change the axis so many different ways. Yes, I got it turned in Fusion 360, but the axis, axes are still turned with it. You know, sometimes I should just give up and use what I have, but I kept trying to turn this 90 degrees because I know there's a way to do it. And if you're using Fusion 360 and you run into a problem like this, I want you to know that you're not the only one. The bit I'm using is a compression bit. It's got up and down flutes on it which is great for working with plywood. It leaves a nice finish on the top and the bottom faces. So, you know, the nice birch plywood doesn't fry up, uh, fray up with a bunch of splinters. Now I've got my tool runs, but I'm seeing a problem. And this is a very good portion of Fusion 360 is you can run through your tool runs, and this is where you notice certain problems. And here I noticed that in the pocket on the 8, it's not going deep enough. So I can go in and edit the toolpath and click on the back circle so that it goes the full depth. And then when you look at it, redraw the tool lines, it goes deeper. There we go. This is a quarter inch end mill, so it is going to take quite a bit of time to remove all that material. So I set up a montage and time lapse. The time lapse is 10x. And we have some Ben Sound music. <laughs>
I really like the time lapse of the machine working. It, it to me, it's really quite entertaining to watch with a little bit of music. Uh, the Fusion 360 comes up with all the tool paths, and Mach 3 does all the control of the machine. But to me, especially in time lapse, it is quite enjoyable to walk, watch the machine work with such precision and grace. Now look at the finish on the edges of the numbers. Really quite good. That compression bit, up and down cut, quarter inch, end mill, does quite well. You can see a little bit of faceting, but you have to get really close to see it. Working on a tool path to cut the sign out of the board. It's a little easier than doing a plunge cut with a uh, skill saw. So I'm looking at various aspects of this at 0.74. I'm in pretty good shape. I'm looking at it from the right. I'm just going under the material ever so slightly from the front it's just going to cut a little bit yeah I, I mean all this looks good now one thing to remember is I have not shut down the machine and it should remember all the points and the zero point so I will go down I will write this G code
paint is wet, I get some retro-reflective glass beads and sprinkle them on with a salt shaker. This is so that when headlights or light hits the sign, they should reflect straight back at the person in the car. The letters are over six inch tall and I think they're vi visible from over 50 feet, maybe 100 feet away from the average viewer. This was a great little project. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.